Thank you, Peter. Can everyone hear me okay? Great. Um, I want to thank uh, the organizers for inviting us here today. And I also want to thank the volunteers for all you do to make the Arboretum a great place for everyone. Uh, this is a unique partnership between the university, the foundation, and for Seattle Parks and Recreation, it's the oldest partnership of its kind. We don't have any other partners with any other groups that are as long standing as the partnership we have with the foundation and the University of Washington. So thank you both for being great partners. Next slide. Uh, uh, the past 16 months brought uh, changes none of us could have predicted in the park department. I wanted to give you a brief history of where we've been over the last year. Uh, it was quite a departure from our traditional park and recreation mission. And in fact, some of the things I'm going to describe to you here today, uh, you could hardly associate with a public park and recreation department, but it is a telling of the journey we've been on over the past year. Uh, this work involved uh, a significant focus on what we consider to be mission essential functions, slide three. Um, as of, so at the end of February of 2020, uh, as you all well know, the world changed dramatically. Um, we were in a pandemic. It was no longer business as usual. Uh, we became a vital ess essential mission role player uh, in supporting the community. Uh, the park department is a place for outdoor respite. Uh, we reduce isolation, which was a big deal for people who were sheltering in place. Uh, we established a set of mission essential functions, uh, and this became the work of the organization. Next slide. Uh, a little bit more about this work. Um, we experienced a sea change role and, you know, sort of the normal work we do. We shelved our routine work. Uh, we were focused on clean, safe parks, food distribution. There were a lot of families that, uh, you know, with the pandemic, just lost the ability to work and earn money and provide food for their families. So we distributed uh, food to the community. Uh, we provided testing and vaccination locations. Uh, we piloted a program that soon became a national model for a park and recreation. We call these, we call this program social distance ambassadors. And literally their job was going from park to park, making sure that the public was not overcrowding uh, in parks. Uh, parks also became the site of many public health campaigns to inform the public around mask wearing and all the things they could do to remain healthy and safe. Uh, we provided hygiene showers as uh, sheltering the homeless population it became a significant issue uh, throughout our park system and still continues to be a big issue today. Uh, the Seattle Park and Recreation staff really stepped up to meet this challenge. Uh, we hold in high esteem the many uns unsung heroes on our front line uh, who never missed a single day of work during the course of the pandemic. We're incredibly proud of the staff and the way they stepped up to fill these important mission essential function roles. Uh, they did everything from shelter, uh, provide shelter to people at community centers. Uh, keep in mind that when people couldn't pay rent, unfortunately, a lot of people lost the ability to live in their home and community centers were um, one of the only places that people could go to. We had social distancing sheltering operations 24 seven across the system for better than six or eight months. We provided 45,000 45, hours of social distance ambassador hours. Uh, there were lots of mission essential workers who worked in uh, the fire department, public safety, SPD, uh, the King County Sheriff who, you know, daycare operators had suspended operation due to COVID. So we were one of a handful of emergency childcare uh, places that families could register to take their kids to during the day. And of course, this was done all within the social distancing public health guidelines. So um, we really stepped out of our historic mission uh, to really help the city cope with a global pandemic. Next slide. 
uh, social isolation was a big deal for seniors uh, during the pandemic, particularly seniors who live alone. Uh, we provided 2,700 hours of uh, lifelong recreation programming virtually. Uh, our staff would even get together with seniors uh, to teach them how to do Zoom meetings for the first time, uh, just so the community could stay connected. And this is a population that really benefited from uh, that connectedness, uh, even if they couldn't do it in person, uh, providing these outlets and these opportunities for people to feel connected to the community and their neighbors uh, is a great example of how park staff uh, went over and beyond. Uh, we provided 275,000 hours of parks and, gra and grounds maintenance enhanced cleaning. So in this picture in the upper right, you see uh, park and recreation staff uh, cleaning buildings, everything that was a touch point had to be wiped down where the public visited. I believe this was a uh, community center where we had child care and uh, staff during the height of the pandemic uh, showed up every day to clean comfort stations, uh, to clean child care facilities, to clean showering facilities, uh, really went the extra mile. Next slide. So after all of that pandemic response, uh, here we are today, and we're undertaking a campaign called Welcome Back Seattle. Our focus is on outdoor recreation programming because the safest programming as we emerge from the uh, pandemic is still outdoor programming. Uh, we are operating five swimming beaches, two outdoor pools, wading pools, we're continuing innovations that occurred during the pandemic. Uh, we have a Wreck in the Streets program for teens. Uh, we're continuing virtual programming. Uh, we're really gearing up to welcome the community back to its public park and recreation system. Next slide, please. Um, many of you may recall that at the start of the pandemic, we had engaged the community uh, last fall in a strategic planning process that ultimately got suspended um, because with the pandemic, uh, you know, came kind of a situation in the city where the city was facing huge budget cuts and we didn't feel like it was the right time to be, to be discussing uh, uh, park district planning, uh, park district revenue increases, uh, of course, from uh, course from property taxes. So we punted on that until this September. We will re-engage the public and the community in a discussion around how uh, the community wants to uh, reprioritize the next tranche of park district spending. So um, if there are great ideas and plans for the Arboretum, uh, I would encourage everyone listening here to uh, be thinking about how to get engaged in the park district strate strategic planning process uh, this fall. Uh, this is where funding opportunities will be identified and um, uh, it really helps when people show up to those meetings and express interest in uh, capital projects, uh, i.e. for the Arboretum. And uh, this is where we will develop uh, the prioritization for the next six year spending plan. So that's a brief, short history of what's been going on in the Seattle Park and Recreation Department. At this time, I'd like to turn it over to Ray Larson at the University of Washington Botanic Garden. It's all yours, Ray. Thank you, Dr. Hall. 